Solve radical equations. Okay, here are the steps to solving. First, isolate the radical on one side if necessary. Second, raise each side to the same exponent to eliminate the radical. And third, solve the resulting linear or quadratic equation. Be sure to check your solution. Okay, on this first one we have the square root of x plus 25 equals 2. I need to get rid of the square root. So since it's the second root, I can raise this to the power of 2. And the power of 2 and the square root are going to cancel each other out because they are inverse operations. And I'm left with just x plus 25. If I square the left side, I also have to square the right side, so I get a 4 on the right side. Now I have a linear equation to solve, so I will subtract over 25. I get x equals negative 21. Now I need to be sure to check my solutions, so if I plug negative 21 back in, I get negative 21 plus 25 in the radical, so I get the square root of 4, which is equal to 2. Okay, this next one I have a cube root but I don't have the radical alone yet like I did in the first problem. So I need to start by moving this negative 1 over. So I'm going to add 1 onto both sides. Now that my radical is alone, I can take each side to the power of 3. I'm cubing it this time because it's a cube root. The cube root and the cubed cancel out on the left, and I just get 2x minus 6. And on the right, 3 to the third is 27. Okay, so now I can add the 6 over. And then divide by 2. So I get x equals 33 over 2. I didn't mean for that to be such a terrible answer. Um, but we could plug that back in using our calculator even and see if we get the correct answer. Um, I won't worry with doing it here. Okay. Again, need to, to get the radical alone on number 3, so I'm going to start by dividing both sides by 2. And now I just square both sides to get rid of the radical. Subtract the 1 over, I get x equals 3. This one I can just kind of plug in um, in my mind. So inside the radical, we're going to have 3 plus 1, so we'll have 2 square root 4. Square root of 4 is 2, times 2 equals 4. Okay, and on number four, notice that we have just a radical equals another radical. So we can just square both sides. That will get rid of both of the square roots. And then we can solve this equation. I'm going to subtract the x over and subtract the 5 over to the other side. So I get all my x's on one side and all my constants on the other side. Again, I can plug this in. On the left side, I get 2 times 2, which is 4, plus 5, which is 9. And on the right side, I have 2 plus 7, which is 9. So I get square root of 9 on both sides. Okay, now we need to start looking for extraneous solutions. An extraneous solution is a solution that does not work in the original equation. We always need to check our solutions when quadratics occur while solving the ra radical equation. So these won't come up whenever we're solving linear equations like we have been doing. But once we get to the point where we have quadratics, then we will need to be sure to check each answer, and sometimes only one answer will work. Sometimes they will both work. Okay, so now this is new because I now have an x that's outside of the radical. Before now, all the x's have been inside, and I've had linear equations to solve. Now, whenever I square both sides to get rid of the radical, I'm going to have a quadratic on the left side. So over here, x plus 1 times x plus 1, I get x squared plus x plus x plus 1. Now just re remember you do x times x, and then x times 1, 1 times x, and then 1 times 1. And on the right side, I get 7x plus 15 when my square root and my square cancel out. So if I simplify the left side, I have x squared plus 2x plus 1. So now I'm going to be left with a quadratic. I need to move everything to the same side of the equal sign. I always want my x squared term to end up positive. So I'm going to move everything to the left. So I'm going to subtract over the 7x and subtract over the 15. Okay, so now I need to factor this. 
I just need to find the factors that multiply to negative 14 and add to negative 5. Those are going to be x minus 7 and x plus 2. And then to solve it, my last step, I'm just going to say what would make this parenthesis 0? Well, if x equals 7, that would be 0. And what would make the second parenthesis 0? That would be if x equals negative 2. Okay, and so I have two answers, but I need to check them to make sure that they work. So, things that we're looking for. We don't want inside of our radical to be negative. So let me erase everything around my problem so that it's not so crowded. Okay, if I plug, let's start with the 7. If I plug 7 into this equation, I'm going to get 7 plus 1 equals the square root of 7 times 7 plus 15. Nothing's going to end up negative here, and in fact, they'll be equal. 8 equals 7 times 7 is 49, plus 15 is 64. So those work out. Whenever I plug negative 2 in, I get negative 2 plus 1 equals the square root of 7 times negative 2 plus 15. So the problem here is this negative 2 plus 1. The reason is, is because negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1 equals 7 times negative 2 is negative 14, plus 15 would give me a negative, I'm sorry, a positive 1. So I cannot have negative 1 equaling the square root of 1. So since I have a square root equaling a negative number, I know that negative 2 is not my solution, and it's only x equals 7. Okay. This is the same idea as if we had a radical. We're going to try and isolate this term, and then we're going to raise each side to a power that will get rid of that 3 fourths. So I'm going to start by subtracting my 2 over. And now I need to raise each side to a number that's going to cancel out the 3 fourths. So just keep in mind, whenever I raise this to a power, I'm just going to put an empty box here for now. In the end, I want to just get 2x. So I want to take 3 fourths times some number to get 1. That's just going to be the reciprocal of 3 fourths. So I'm going to multiply it by 4 thirds. Sorry that it's a little messy in there. But I'm going to multiply it by 4 thirds because 3 fourths times 4 thirds, I just get 1. So these cancel out. I have to also raise the other side to 4 thirds. And I can simplify 8 to the 4 thirds if I recall my radical rules from a couple concepts ago. This is going to be the cube root of 8 all to the 4th power. The cube root of 8 is 2, so 2 to the 4th power is 16. Okay, so now what I have left is 2x equals 16. And I can just divide both sides by 2. I get x equals 8. Again, I should probably plug this in, but I know that if I plug the 8 in there, it's going to be a positive 16, because 2 times 8 is 16, so I'm not worried about having an extraneous solution. Okay, pause your video right now and solve these problems. Restart for my answers. On this one, we had a little bit of different factoring. Right here, whenever you don't have a... Uh, C terms whenever you don't have that last number without an X. You can just pull out your GCF, which was an X here, and then um, you have X times X minus 4. So X equals 0 and X equals 4. I checked both answers and both answers worked out. On this last one, um, I raised both sides to the second power because 1 half times 2 is 1, so that canceled out that rational exponent. Um, I factored it, I got two answers, checked both of them, and the negative 5 did not work. Now, right here, just remember that anything to the 1 half is just the square root. So that's 6 plus 30, the square root of 6 plus 30. Um, and down here, square root of 25 would have been 5, but it was equal to a negative 5, so that did not work.